So I figured I'd make at least one more follow-up video to my last video following the revelations of the accusations coming out by the second woman, Deborah Ramirez. So today I kind of did the same thing I did with my last video about the Ford allegations. The new allegations hardly differ from the initial ones. They are virtually identical. Like with Ford, this incident allegedly happened nearly four decades ago when Deborah Ramirez, a freshman at Yale, was at a drunken teenage party where she, like Ford, admits to being intoxicated. In fact, she states her hesitation in coming forward was attributed to holes in her memory due to her inebriation. Despite that, at this alleged drunken dorm room party, Ramirez, like Ford, claims Kavanaugh forced himself on her, this time by revealing himself. In yet another stunning parallel to Ford's story, Ramirez says there were witnesses, all of which have denied having any knowledge of such an incident taking place. Ramirez claims another male at the party pulled out a fake plastic penis and pointed it at her, which she maintains she did not mistake for Kavanaugh. Though, given the amount of time that has elapsed and the alleged heavy drinking, the likelihood of mistaken identity runs very, very high. One former friend who was married to a male classmate that allegedly took part in the aforementioned drinking game said she and Ramirez were best friends for years and she never heard about this incident. Ramirez is also demanding a FBI investigation. But the similarities don't end there because the timing, as Ford's was, is impeccable. This allegation came out directly after the Senate Judiciary Committee had agreed to allow Christine Blasey Ford to testify Thursday about her claim. Again, witnesses and friends the accuser alleged were present during these encounters emphatically deny having ever attended these gatherings, and some of them claim to not even know Kavanaugh at all. Personally, I am beginning to wonder if anything actually happened with Ford or Ramirez. Really, I can't say I haven't played with the idea that this may very well be a smear campaign. It doesn't seem to pass the smell test. At best, this was a booze-fueled encounter to which Ramirez said no and Kavanaugh respected. At worst, this shows a pattern of political conspiracy to perpetuate a smear campaign. Again, two drunken teenage parties, two extremely hazy decades-old admittedly inebriated recollections, two sets of witnesses and friends on both sides that don't recall or outright deny these alleged gatherings or incidents even took place. The two allegations have clouds of suspicions about the timing. Both allegations could be cases of mistaken identity due to almost four decades of elapsed time and intoxication so extreme both women have trouble recalling details. These accounts are so much the same, it's uncanny. But since this story is moving so fast, it's impossible to tell how this will continue to unfold. Let's sit and watch this nail biter closely. The fact is, there are a lot of moving parts here. We've got to apply some rationality and scrutiny. Let's not pretend we can divorce the politics from this. The sad reality is, confirmation or not, the civilians still lose on this one. This climate of accusation minus evidence has already snowballed and is beginning to spread to the civilian world. Employers not wanting to hire women because they're afraid they'll falsely claim they're a victim. Men being pigeonholed as sexual predators. Take off your virtual reality goggles and wake up.